Hey guys, welcome back to another Combo Guy Stuff HLO video. Today we're going to be doing a very easy, delicious, happens to be healthy and light, stuffed crab salmon. Alright, this is going to be super easy. Not a lot of prep to it. We have five russet potatoes. You know, since I've been doing these homemade french fries, this is just a really delicious, easy way to make them. I'm going to be doing this completely on the grill. You can do these in the oven if you don't want to. You could even do the fish in the oven under the broiler. But this is really easy on any barbecue. You don't really need charcoal, but again, gives you that little extra layer of flavor. We're simply going to be cutting these into French fry size bites. No salt for this. Absolutely none. All we're going to do is season these with just a light coat of olive oil and cayenne pepper. Absolutely delicious combo. I have two big salmon fillets here, about five pounds worth and three pounds of lump crab meat. Now it's not an inexpensive recipe. These are like uh, five bucks a piece. And uh, the salmon, try to get it on sale. I got it for $6.99 a pound today, which was a very good price. The only seasoning we're gonna use on that is this lemon pepper from McCormick. Excellent on fish. You don't need any extra salt on it. It's just absolutely beautiful. And all we're gonna be doing for the stuffing is mixing in the lump crab meat, which we're gonna drain. And we're gonna keep it chunky and just mix that with some finely chopped green onion. And I'm just using the greens part. We don't want a big onion flavor, so just, you know, the last two-thirds of this, fine chopped. We're gonna mix that up, cut some slits in the fish, make small little flay-sized chunks, and it's going right on the grill. We're gonna do a homemade tin foil or aluminum foil pan for this, so we're not gonna ruin anything and it's gonna fit well on the grill. So, got a lot of chopping to do here. These are kind of a pain in the butt to make french fries with. They should make some kind of automatic thing, but other than that, we just have to fire up the grill, so let's go get the coals started. Okay, I've got the potatoes chopped here, and you just want them in, you know, small french fry sized chunks. And what we're going to do is a light dredging in olive oil and cayenne. You can go as heavy or light on the cayenne as you want. It's not that potent. It's not a real high spice type chili. It's got a nice sweetness to it, so don't be afraid of it. Just mix that in the oil. I've got a little homemade sheet pan here. This is about grill size. And I'm going to do these in a couple batches. Because the grill isn't big enough to do the whole thing. So it's probably going to take two. And we're just going to put them in little bit at a time and just lightly coat them. You don't want them dripping. So make sure you shake off any excess olive oil here in this pan before you put it over to your cooking sheet. So we don't want them saturated or sitting in oil. You just want a light coating and get the cayenne on them. That's beautiful. And then spread them out in an even single layer that will help them cook. Just continue doing that and fill the sheet up and the coals should be ready for the first batch here. I've got a full chimney going out there. I'll show you that. And if you need more oil and cayenne, obviously just put some more in there. I just didn't want to overdo it in the beginning in case I didn't end up using that much. Don't want to waste it. It's not cheap. Okay. So I'm going to finish this up and then we'll go out to the grill. Okay, I've got a little bit of leftover coals in there, that's fine. Got a full chimney, I'm going to put it all up against one side. We're going to do the fries right over that. The fish we're going to do indirect. So let that heat up a bit. And bring out the fries. There we go. I'm going to put the lid on. I'll keep an eye on these. I'll probably do these for... 25 minutes or so, I'll come back and take a look. Just when they start to get golden, crispy, 
looking good, nice and firm. They'll be ready for the next batch. Looks like I'll be doing about three batches. And not to worry, because these reheat very well. So I'll have the salmon while the last batch is going. And I probably have to do two batches of the salmon unless I take all the fries off. I don't know. We'll see, because I got a lot of salmon. But anyway, I'm cooking for you know several days, because if I'm going to do the barbecue and break out the big stuff, then yeah, I'm cooking for a week. All right, our fries are going. The first batch is off, and I've been snacking on it here. Man, these things are good. Mm. So to make our stuffing really easy, I got the greens from the green onions in here. Three cans of lump crab meat, and then I'm just going to do a couple cloves worth of garlic. Not a lot, just a little bit of flavor. Just about a couple teaspoons of minced garlic. All right, and just mix all this up, and then we'll prep and get it inside the fish. All right, we are ready to do some stuffing. You want nice, big, thick fillets for this. These are farm-raised. You can use the wild-caught, but I typically find them to be a little thinner. And as always, when you cut your fish, especially salmon with a big, thick skin, use a very sharp knife and a cutting board. And you'll go right through it like butter. So what we want to do is first portion them into single serving fillets there we go and you can see how nice and thick these are and this is going to help especially with our stuffing but it just gives a delicious moist tender fish rather than something that's just kind of plain and can get dried out. Beautiful. One to go. There we are. Now what we want to do is run a slit lengthwise. You don't want to cut all the way through, but you need a good pocket. You can just cut right down to the skin. All you have to do is let the knife do the cutting. Unless you're pressing down, you're not going to go through the skin, so that's fine. Let's do that on every piece. On these parts that have the thicker part of the fillet and the thin part, don't cut into the thin part. Just make your pocket here and this will just be good fish on its own. Now all we have to do is get the crab filling inside the fish. Pretty self-explanatory here. Just to make yourself some room. I've got a larger cutting board that I'm going to transfer everything to. So I'm going to show you one or two here and then get everything done. All you want to do is fill the fish as best you can. Nothing really magical about it. Squish it all in there. Obviously the bigger ones are going to take more.
You just want to make sure that it's packed enough where you're not going to have the crab falling all over the place when you put it on the grill, because that would just be a waste. Okay, do one of the filet thick sides here. And if you want to do your own kind of stuffing, go right ahead. You want to put lobster in here, crawfish, oysters, scallops. Man, anything would be good. Seafoods are very good to mix and match. Alright, so there you go. You can see a couple done. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest. And I still have to put the third batch of fries on be about uh, five minutes here before the second one comes off. It's taking about a half an hour per batch. This fish is only going to take 12 to 15 minutes tops. So this is going to go on halfway through the last batch of fries. So we'll be back in one second. And there we have all the beautiful fish dressed, stuffed, ready to go on the grill. So this will hit in about, uh, let's see, well, fries are coming off now. Third batch is going on. These will go on in about 15 minutes. I almost forgot the seasoning. What we're going to do is just uh, lightly top each one with the lemon pepper. Just want a nice even coat. This is somewhat to taste, but you do want a good even coating of this because we're not putting salt and pepper on. So this is where all of our seasoning flavor is going to come from. And this is a great seasoning to use for cooking on the lighter side because it is light on the sodium. And it's enough where you don't have to add any of your own. And if I can say that, I mean it's really good. There we go. That looks good. Beauteous. Alright, we've got about maybe... 15 minutes left on this last batch of fries, so I'm going to go ahead and put on the fish. I need some room here. I'm going to scooch these fries over as much as I can. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. Make some room. And then the fish. Holy <coughs> bear. Uh, you know what? I need some tongs. Hold on. No, I guess I don't. All right. Now for the fish. I got a chair out here I'm using. Got it on a cutting board. All we have to do is put the thinner parts towards the edges. You just want to put everything opposite the coals. Alright, so there we go. I'm going to put the lid on real quick. Vents fully open for this. We want temps around 300. We're just going to check it in about 12 minutes. When the fish in the center goes opaque and it easily flakes but it's still juicy, it's done. It's really easy. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, beautiful. Alright, fries are done. Just getting some color on the fish on the top of the uh, crab from the uh, smoke and the charcoal. Still have some juice bubbling out. It's got that white kind of like froth. Tells you that salmon is perfectly done. All right, let's go ahead and take it off. Take it in there. You have it. Beautiful, easy, delicious crab stuffed salmon and fresh homemade hot fries. Mm, I love these things. Fish is absolutely perfectly done. Juicy, flaky. Mmm. Awesome. All right, well, I'm starving, so I'm going to plate me up a dish here. Have some lunch. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. We'll see you next time.